might have to eat them too. Grab your mashed potatoes and form it into these little parties, if you will. These wee parties. I think they're called patties because you pat them. So just flour them a little bit. The flour just sort of browns it up a bit and gives it a bit of a crispy crust. Does it matter how hot that pan is? Don't want it too hot. See? It's moderately hot. Look at that! Golden brown! Absolutely fantastic! Again, look, I've got a crap load of butter and goodness in there because I don't mind if the potatoes suck all of that up. That's fantastic. That's why when you actually make these, you don't have to make them so wet because it will absorb all the butter and the oil and all the goodness that's in the pan, all right? So we've just got them golden brown on either side. We're going to whack them on this tray and then we can stick it in the oven. Salmon time! All right, hot oil, pan, whack in your salmon. Uno. Yeah, that's, that came uh, with the skin, but I took the skin off. You can also serve it with the skin, or you can just buy fillets from Safeway from your local fish store, and they just come without skin. They're like $5 each. I'm going to get about that much salt, about that much pepper. As my friend Tony Rogalski used to say to me, have you seasoned it yet? Always season your food. Snapping, crackling, popping. Just coming around the edges here, you can see it cooking up there. Oops. Turn that over. Turn that over. I'm gonna crank it for about 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, 15 seconds. Five, I think it's next. They're about. <laughs> <laughs> Why is going, huh? Why is going, huh? Why I order? Now again, if you like your salmon cooked more, cook it for longer. Me, I'm like a seal it, on, seal it on both sides. Turn it off, take it off the heat, that is cooked. We're ready to serve it now. Fried mashed potato -y goodness. It doesn't get much richer and deliciouser than this. Okay, your beautiful salmon on top of that. Look at that, it's lovely. You can still see the pink bits on the inside. This absolutely gorgeous tomato, olive, and parsley salsa. Which I'm just going to spoon on like that. Wait, wait, wait. This is something I learned whilst working in several quite fancy restaurants. Stick your finger over the end of the, your oil container, right? Little splodge around the edge there. GTX2, boss. Absolutely gorgeous. Ready to serve up. And there it is. Atlantic salmon with mashed potato cakes and a parsley, olive and tomato salsa. The most popular sexy dish as voted by our studio audience. Enjoy. As an entree thing, there would be some soup, yeah. and there would be Chinese food. Main course would be probably like you know duck. Really bizarre, isn't it? Very mm. different from what they eat here. No. Yeah. Anyway, but that that's all right. Um, and how would you do that? Just get it from outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing outside Colonial Stadium, the AFL's new fantastic headquarters down here at the Docklands, in beautiful weather, as you can see. Now I sometimes work down here as a chef to party. So I thought I'd take you inside just to see what it's like inside a gigantic, gigantic commercial kitchen. Let's go and have a look. We'll go and meet Johnny Merson and have a bit of a chat. What is the toughest part about running a kitchen like this? The gathering of the information. Yep. Um, and then actually physically having to divulge out to varying amounts of staff in various areas. That's all the menu planning, the menu the planning, the amounts, um, quantity, staffing costs. levels, all that kind of stuff. That would yeah. be the hardest part. So it's a, just a logistics thing? Logistics, yeah. main thing. If you get the logistics right, you've got to have trust and faith in the chefs that they can actually cook yeah. and the food will taste decent and it'll be hot when it's served. Do 
give me your idea of what you'd think would be sexy food. What would you cook for someone if you were romancing it? Chocolate, definitely. Chocolate? Chocolate. To so say you're thinking desserts or are we thinking like chocolate covered? I'm thinking chocolate desserts. And what about as a sort of, what would you feed somebody to start off with? Oysters. Oysters. How do you like your oysters? Baked. And what about for a main course, what would you serve? Beef. Beef? Beef. Medium rare with blood oozing out of it? Has to be. Absolutely. <laughs> I went to Taiwan just for a stop over and I ate this soup. Absolutely beautiful. I thought and I'd how, eaten everything under the sun. And how is it described on the menu? Um, just, there was actually pig vagina soup I found out. <laughs> <laughs> Start with the champagne, you have to have candles. Any girl that would be spending time with me would have to have a great appreciation for pizza. So I'd oh, make her a, spe a special pizza of mine, give her a nice beer, and then we'd eat it by the time the footy would be on. I'd just serve me, actually. Serve you. I'm not a cook. Can't cook. Good cooking guy. Sexy. Thanks, cooking guy. He cooks and he cleans. He's a cooking machine. He's a cooking guy. He's sour and he's sweet and he loves cooking meat. He's a cooking guy. If you need a souffle to lift off your toupee, here's the cooking guy. He'll make you something yummy and he'll tell it to you funny. That's the cooking guy. All right, the cooking guy. Uh-huh, you know the cooking guy. Yeah, yeah, the cooking guy. Oh, if you want a fish, you know he'll cook that dish because he's a cooking guy. Some mash and it won't cost much cash Cause he's the cooking guy If you need a souffle To lift off your toupee Here's the cooking guy He'll make you something yummy And he'll tell it to you funny He's the cooking guy Yeah, the cooking guy Yeah, the cooking guy